Related rates, connected rates. They're in the same equation. I explained to you about the balloon, the volume, and the radius. dV dt could be in the same equation as dr dt. Because as time goes by, the balloon got bigger, the radius gets bigger. They could be in the same equation. And you're asking, well, how do they get in the same equation? Well, look at the surface area of a sphere. A equals to 4 pi r squared. When I take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, dA dt doesn't simplify. It just, this just stays as dA dt is equal to, and the 4 and the pi are just constants. They come out. So now I'm asking you to tell me what the derivative of r squared is. 2r. But then since it's a variable, you have to end it with, I'm taking the derivative of r with respect to time. There is a differential equation. It has two derivatives in it. One is how area is changing. One is how the radius is changing. Now you could simplify this because 2r and 4 pi, you could put it in together as 8 pi r dr dt. Now, obviously, we don't know what to, how, what to use this for yet, so we just got to go through and do the mechanics. It's purely implicit differentiation. This is a volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, same balloon that I'm blowing up putting air into it, making the volume change as it goes. Because as that balloon gets bigger, yeah, you could blow in the same amount of air each time. <sighs> two cubic centimeters, <sighs> two cubic centimeters, <sighs> two cubic centimeters, if that's how you're putting in. But the radius is changing, will not always be the same length each time. As the balloon gets bigger, then it doesn't go out as far because there's a lot of, it's the same air being put in. So dr dt is changing every single second. dv dt may not be changing. It may stay the same. It's the same amount of air you're blowing in. Or letting water, air come out. And you're letting the same air come out, a constant set of air come out. But anyway, to make this a differential equation, I have to take the derivative with respect to time, both sides. That's terrible DT. No wonder she asked for it. So the derivative of a volume with respect to time, the derivative of a V is 1. But what do we say? 1 what? dV dT. So why would I waste my time writing 1? Even though you are right, the derivative of V is 1. It's just a variable, no exponents, no constant in front equals to, I hope you see like the last problem, I have pi is a constant, 4 thirds is a constant, so it just comes out 4 thirds pi. But now I have to do the derivative of r cubed. Well, what is the derivative of r cubed? It is. But what must I say? I was doing the derivative of what? r with respect to time. Could we simplify that? Probably. What do you notice cancels? Don't all speak out at once. That's a 4 thirds pi and a 3 over 1. What? The what? Cancels? The 4 cancels? Oh, just the 3 cancel. thought you wanted to be in, in, in uh, Validia's limelight. Got to be quicker than that. Cancel. There is cancel. 4 pi r squared dr dt. Yeah, it was one. Okay. Now it's getting harder because does anybody have a clue to what this equation might be from? I don't know. Oh, I thought you got excited there. 
What? Anybody have a clue where that equation come from? Um, Say it louder. Is the it is the Pythagorean theorem. And it just so happened to have been solved for A, one of the sides, okay? But anyway, if I keep it the way it's written, one of the legs is uh, C squared minus B squared to the one-half power. Now, normally, A, C, and B are all different variables, right? Yeah. But this time, he's telling me that C is constant. What does that mean? What kind of triangle would have C constant? I don't know if you could... Oh, the legs are changing. Yeah, I, I see it now. If I had this triangle... Well, I'll make it a, i got to make it a right triangle. Or Pythagoras would roll, a, roll over in his grave... If I close those sides down a little bit, like made this one rotate this way and this one rotate this way, or at least just the top one rotating, then I could see how that, well, it would no longer be a right triangle, would it? I don't know how I could do it. Oh, yeah, now I see it. Somebody tell me. Either tell me before I say it. The, the hypotenuse can stay constant. I don't know how you make a triangle if that stayed constant. Well, you know what? He never did say it's Pythagorean theorem, but if we were, it probably would not be a real one. Uh, well, one of the legs has to be constant. Is there a way to, is there a way to make this leg stay the same, but the other pieces change? Let's see. Could this get longer? Would that make this get longer? Oh, okay, then do another one. Could this get the same, and this gets shorter, wouldn't that make this shorter? Yeah, I guess you could. A could be the same measurement each time, but the hypotenuse changed and the other leg changed. That could work. But regardless, who cares? That's just what it is. He wants me to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. So that's d a d t d d t of all of this. What is the derivative of a with respect to time? Wouldn't you just say d a d t yes. equals two? How do I do the derivative of that whole thing to the one half power? Uh, chain rule. You are going to have to use chain rule. Very good. Oh, wait a minute. Why did I go D A D T? He said, he said A. Oh uh, no, C is C is constant. Yeah. Oh wait. Yeah, he wanted C is constant. I didn't make C constant. I made A constant. That makes those three triangles not what he had. Yeah, yeah. Can I do a different picture? Here's my A. Here's my C. Here's B. Is it? What would happen if, if I made this angle come in, get smaller? Is it feasible that the hypotenuse could still be the same length but farther down? That makes that distance different and that distance. This A may have gotten shorter and B may have gotten longer. Yeah, that's what would happen. As long as I, as long as I move this vertical... What if I raised it up? What if I raised it up over here? What would be happening? It's the same distance, but then A got bigger and B got smaller, right? Okay, that makes more sense than, than that. I was doing the wrong one. Why am I spending so much time talking about how that triangle can change? This is not a geometry class, and nor do I want it to be. All right, okay, Valerie's right. I need a chain rule. But what I do with the power? Whoop, I erased it. What I do with the exponent? Where does it go? Goes to, the Goes to the front. Keep everything on the inside, which was, what was the inside? C squared, C squared minus B squared. B squared. What I put on for the exponent? 
half. And is that is that done, or do I got to do more chain rule stuff? Okay, help me out. What would I be doing? Derivative of the inside. Good job. There's an A of the day for doing chain rule right between the two of them. So from left to right, what's the derivative of the inside? What's the derivative of C squared? If C wasn't constant. Oh, that'd be just a zero. What's the derivative of negative B squared? Negative 2B. But what do you do every time you do the derivative of a variable that is not time? You have to write what? dB dt. That's right. And we could clean that up. Not that it's required in this problem, but definitely in the bottom is the square root of c squared minus b squared. And, and there's a 2 here. Well, does the 2's cancel? I'll write it. There's a 2 here. Then there's a negative 2 b db dt. The 2's do cancel. So it just becomes a negative b over the square root. Negative 2b, negative b db dt over the square root of c squared minus b squared. That was kind of clumsy. Not very useful. I mean, it is useful in a way because you are going to do word problems that have the need for Pythagorean theorem. That's going to happen. Volume is pi r squared h. Oh, it's the famous formula for the cylinder, right? What does it mean when he says that r is constant? Radius is not changing. But the height is and the volume is. So it's kind of like a stack of uh, rich crackers, right? All the crackers have the same radius, and you can stack them, and you can shrink the stack. The volume of cracker would be taller. As it gets taller, it would be more volume. If it was a less stack, it would be less volume. The height's changing. Okay? So do you understand? can you see that in your head? Do you like those crackers? Yes, I do. Those are my favorite crackers. The Ritz, that's the name. Mm -hmm. They're so buttery. Mm. Take the derivative, both sides, dv dt, d something dt. I'm taking the derivative of all of that. What is the derivative of a v with respect to t? Sir, what did you do? I lost it. Pi r squared. Oh, it's right there. It's embedded. Oh, no, it isn't. How's that? In my imagination, it was. Pi r squared. I thought I wrote it. H. Is that better? What would I do without you? So what's the derivative of the left? What do I write? You just write dv dt. That's right. It's a derivative of a volume with respect to time. Is the derivative of a volume with respect to time equals to any constants on the right? The r. What else? Pi. So I can write pi r squared. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, the problem has variables that are constants. I sometimes don't worry about it to the end of the problem. And then I know that if it's a constant, I'll know dr dt means zero. If I was to do it with a dr dt in there, dr dt would be zero because it's constant. But anyway, I think he did this on purpose. You'll see why, because it'd be hard. I, I would have to do a different rule in a second. Uh, pi r squared comes out. What's the derivative of h with respect to time? Exactly that. Two variables changing. One variable wasn't really a variable. It was a name of radius, but it never changes. So it's not a variable then. Okay. Okay, a trig function. And he's giving me the equation of cosine of theta. So theta must be a variable right here. And it can be a bigger angle. It can be a smaller angle. Because bottom line is, if I say x over 15... The 15 will always be there, but the x could change. If this gets uh, angle comes out, 
then x, x changes. If I want to keep this to be 15, x will be changing. Anyway, let's do the derivative with respect to time. Both sides. Okay, derivative of cosine. By the way, this requires chain rule because you got the trig function and the angle. Derivative of cosine. Negative five. Of what? Theta. Of theta. Now you got to go inside and do the derivative of theta with respect to time. What's the derivative of theta? One, but what else do you have to say? One what? D what? What's the variable? Theta dt. One d theta dt. Every time you do the derivative of a variable, and it's not constant, you got to always end it with d theta dt. The only thing I didn't do is I just did not multiply it by a one. I just left that off. Equals to, uh-oh, what's happening here? Is, uh, the derivative of x over 15 with respect to time. How would you do that derivative? You, you could do quotient rule. I'll do quotient rule. Or you could have looked at it as 5 to the negative 1 times x. You could do that. Or you could look at it as 1 fifth x. Maybe I won't do quotient rule. So it's 15. 15. What if I wrote it as 1 15th of x? Would I need quotient rule? Couldn't I just pull out the 1 15th and do the derivative of x? What's the derivative of x with respect to time? 1 15th. 1 15th what? That's still a variable here. Dx. Say it again. Dx you have to end it with dx dt. There you go. You got two things that are changing. I told you theta could be changing, then x has to change. So it makes sense that you have a dx dt in there, and it makes sense that we have a d theta dt in there. Because theta can change, and it has a rate of change at different points of time. Same thing with x. Now here's the hardest one. It looks just like our cylinder over here, but in our cylinder, which is a lot like a cone, did you know... Did you know that a cone is nothing more than one-third of a cylinder? I should bring my, uh, I've got manipulatives that creates the cone and the, the cylinder and that you can pull out the, the one-third cylinder out of it. I think, I think I got it from Dr. Garcia. He gave it to me. So the difference with this problem is none of those variables are constants. I have a V, I have an R, and I have an H. Okay, hopefully somebody will tell me something. D, I mean, I'm go. I don't want to do the work yet. V equals to one-third pi R squared H. Take the derivative with respect to time, both sides. Derivative of volume with respect to time is dv dt. What about the right side? Does anything come out? Is the one-third just a constant? Is the pi just a constant? Can I factor that out, one-third times pi? Or pi over 3? And I still have my d with respect to time of? Pi r squared h, not pi. What did I say that for? It was radius. It was ra radius squared h. 
Not done yet. I still need to do that derivative over there. But what do you notice it? R squared times H. How would I do the derivative of two things? Well, this whole thing's implicit. But there's a different rule when you're multiplying. If I only had a name for that, the product? that's it. Oh, yeah. Product rule, yeah, very good. So dv dt will be equal to pi th over 3 times something, and I'm going to do exactly what Valeria said, the product rule. The first, which is r squared, times, what's the derivative of h with respect to time? 1 dh dt, that's right, dh dt, plus the second, which is h, times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of r squared with respect to time? 2r dr dt. And since that's all they were asking us to do, Anything else I do is icing on the cake. Pi over 3, r squared, dh dt, and all I'm going to do is make this 2rh, to, just to make it prettier, dr dt. There it is. That's the best you can do. When there is, the, so the cylinder and the cone are the hardest problems you'll ever have to do in this lesson. Why are they hard? Because when they come up on the AP test, people forgot the product rule. And it happens to us all. Questions on this page before I move on? All right, let's do our first problem. All related rates are usually a word problem. Okay? And the author of this curriculum came up with how to demonstrate a few problems. And here are all the things I'm looking for for every problem. Now, I never used to teach it that way. So I still kind of have my old ways of looking at the problem. But then I'll try to answer the questions within this box. Because after you do this problem, you how to break the problem down. So here's what I tend to do. Air is leaking out inflated balloon in the shape of a sphere and it's leaking at the rate of what is it two, uh, 230 cubic centimeters so in my mind I have this balloon and it's a sphere here's a little string and he's telling me that air is leaking out so air is coming out when air is coming out and it, it, he's telling me how much air that is, what would you label that 230 as? What, what's changing if I put 230 centimeters per minute, centimeters per minute? What, what is that? What does that change on the balloon? What, the size. Say it again? The size. Yes. The volume. The, say it again. The volume is changing by 230 centimeters per minute. I'm going to label that dv dt. Here's another hard question. Is that a constant rate of change, or do you think it's changing like it's sometimes more air, sometimes less air? Or is he being very explicit that that's how much air is coming out every minute? That's a constant. It pays to think about these things. Anyway, at the instant when the radius is 4 centimeters, you heard Valeria say that the balloon is getting smaller, right? And I used to be able to teach this using a movie that I, I used to watch. I used to show it in calculus. I think a couple years ago I still showed it uh, at the, after AP test. Anybody heard of the movie Clock Stoppers? No. Imagine this for a minute. 
Clock Stoppers was about this boy. He, his dad worked for some secret agency, and some bad people came to the house. And what before that happened, the boy went and found something, and the father had a watch. He put it on, but not think nothing of it. Well, outside, before the bad people came, he accidentally hit a button on the watch, and he realized that all around him, time stopped. The raindrops were in the air. They didn't move. The birds that were flying were just stopped. And so he realized that when he pressed that button on that watch, clock stopper, everything stopped except for him. He pressed the button again, and everything continued as, as planned. Well, you, obviously that's a superhuman skill to have if you're being attacked and you hit that button. You can walk around your attacker and you can probably take the guns out of their hand, take the knives out of their hand and, and run away and then turn it on and then they don't know where you went, right? That's the scenario. What does that do with this? Imagine that balloon is leaking air. And then you stop the time. Boom exactly when the radius was four centimeters. And then you could walk around that balloon and you could take measurements, you could do stuff because you now have a snapshot of when that four minutes stop, or yeah, four minutes, four centimeters was. You could even find out how long it took and all of that cases. Anyway, at the instant the radius is four, so I know I want R to be four centimeters at some time, what is the rate of change of the radius? What is he asking me for? He's asking me for what is dr dt? When the radius is 4. So that, that's how I used to set up those problems. Draw your picture, identify everything in your problem, but the author did, did something better than me. <coughs> the author says... Identify all variables in this problem. Now, remember we have. We have a sphere. We have losing a volume of air. We have variables in the volume of air. So all these variables. So what volumes would I write down? What variables would I write down? I said, what volume? Okay, that's one of the answers. Volume. <coughs> Give me another one. Radius. Radius. Give me another one. Time. Say again. You know, Friday they said time too, and I let them say it. But we won't really have to write time because time is involved always, and it's never constant. And I mean, it's it's, it's I mean, it's the constant in the sense that time is ticking, but it's never a variable in your problem. So you don't really have to use time. I think you volume and radius is all that I care about. So I'll leave that right now. Identify any of these of these variables that will always remain constant. Any idea? Volume. volume. Okay. Volume will remain constant. Nice. Identify the other ones that you need to find. Any variables I'm looking for? Oh, wait. Volume and radius was, was correct. But that created the DVDT. That also created a DRDT. Those are also variables. My bad. If you have a volume, you might have a DVDT. If you have an R, you might have a DRDT. Okay. It just so happens that uh, DVDT is always the same. So which of those volumes am I looking for? <coughs> I got to get a cough drop. I'm looking for DRDT. By the way, did I mention that your rates can be positive or negative? Tell me about volume in this case. What's the volume doing? How is it changing? It's what? Okay, so what, would it make sense that DVDT would be negative? So up here, I could have wrote a negative 230 centimeters per minute. That's a good habit if air was coming out. It's a lot different than air being blown in, right? So I'm looking for DRDT. That's what we're looking for. 
This is the important step, step four. I need an equation that relates everything pretty much that you said. Now, sometimes there's an exception that's something I won't need, but pretty much those that you were thinking about, if I only had an equation, you have to think of real world situation, geometry, business, any equ equations stand out in your mind? Hint, hint, they were probably on the last page. Would it be a volume equation? Yes. What is the volume of a sphere? Four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. In the old days, the answer was yes. You had to always know all equations, business equations, geometry equations, but here's what's happened in the last 10 years. Every time they have a related rate question, they always give the equation in the problem. Thank God, right? Yeah. I think they realized that they weren't testing you on your memory. They're testing you on using it. So they were giving the equations. So we're volume. Next step says implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation uh, with respect to time. Now you know why we practiced that first page, Valeria, that you had no idea why are we doing this. So I'm going to go and take my V equals to 4 thirds pi r cubed. And I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. And we already did this on the other page, but I think you can still tell me the answer is going to be dv dt is, anybody? Four-thirds pi is a constant, guys. Four-thirds pi is a constant. Continue it, please. Say it again, r squared? 3r squared. Oh, 3r squared. Over, no, uh, dr, over dr dt. Beautiful job. Uh, anything cancel? The threes cancel. So if you were going to make it simpler, you would write it as 4 pi r squared dr dt. There's a perfect equation you've created. Now, the last step, once you've done the calculus, I, I'm going to encourage you, never plug anything in until after you've done the calculus. Calculus says, substitute all the instantaneous rates. That DVDT was instantaneous, but it was always the same anyway. And values of the variables and solve for the remaining rate or variable. So in this equation, do I know any of these? Do I know dv dt? Yes. What was that? Two thirds pi. Was it positive or negative? Uh, negative. Negative two thirty pi equals to uh, four pi. Do I know r at this point of time? Yes. Remember. I hit the button on the watch. And at this moment of time, the radius was what? Four centimeters. Four centimeters squared. And do I know my dr dt? Or is that what I'm looking for? Do you notice everything got filled in? My exact answer, by just dividing both sides by... 64 pi, because that's what 4 squared times 4 is. Divide both sides by 64 pi. I get dr dt is a negative 230 pi over 64 pi. And if you'd be happy enough to delete those pi's and reduce that fraction... Let's see, 165 over 32, negative 165 over 32. I don't know if it reduces any more. 
Uh, I'm not sure. But what's the unit of my rate of change of the radius? Has to have a unit. And it always has to be per something, per minute, per hour, per day. Isn't it? Did I do 150, 160? Did I, did I not divide by 2 correctly? It was, oh, 135. I was thinking it was something else. Wait. 115. Thank you. Over th Now, wait. Now, I, does it divide anymore? Nine, ten, no. I think I'm good, but I still need the unit. Radius is in what measurement? Centimeter, and it's a rate of change. Rate of change, centimeters per what? If you don't put the correct unit, you could lose the whole credit for that point. Why is my dr dt uh, negative? I'm wondering why. And what happened? The radius is shrinking? Ah, you're just too smart. You know, you know you are, right? Yeah. Um, and the next problem, I'm sure two, or whatever this one is. I <laughs> like, I love your modesty. Yeah, I should get home with them. You know what? You have a right. You have a right. A stone is dropped into a calm body of water, and what does it do? It creates ripples in the form of concentric circles. Mm -hmm. So I throw the pebble out in the water. Yes. What? I was talking to you. Oh, yes, ma'am. I suppose so. Yes. Where did she? What did Ty you do with those passes? Did you lose them? Right oh, okay. No, I need them always turned into me now. I can't let them walk out unattended. So I drop this pebble in the water. Here comes this ripple. That was the first wave. As time goes by, there's another ripple. The wave is moving out. That move, wave is moving out. Got the idea? Right? That's what's happening. What do I know? The radius of the outer ripple is increasing. Oh, I get it. At one foot per second. After the rock was thrown, there was my radius, you see? But we're not talking about that ripple. We're talking about as far out as I go, the radius of the outer, as this thing is going out, is a rate of change. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> R is changing, so dr dt he's telling me, is one. See, I knew the door opened, but I thought it was because somebody left. One foot per second. Only the radius of the outer ring is changing at that rate. It says that. The radius of the outer ripple is changing at one foot per second. Maybe this smaller ripple is not having the same change. So we, we're not talking about the change of that ripple. We're talking about the change of the, this ripple going out. When the radius is four feet, so again, after we watch this water being rippled, when the radius, I hit, I hit my button on my watch, boom, the radius is four feet. Time stops. There it is. At that moment of time, this ripple was four feet. That's what I'm stopping. Wants me to find out at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing. Interesting. At what rate is the, dis the area? Well, what do you think the area represents? Area of what? Circle, yeah. So the total area was pi r squared, and we're asking, what's the rate of this? We're asking, what is d a d t? The rate of the area 
is what I'm looking for. Do you think it's getting bigger or smaller? It's a good question, right? The area is getting bigger. That's right. The area is getting bigger, so it stands to make sense that dA dt is, is positive, right? Identify all the variables in this problem. Well, what do you think? Give me one. What? Radius is one. And with radius, we have a dr dt. True or not? As the radius is changing, the r is changing. What else? Area, area for sure. And if area is changing, that's dA dt. Do I want to do volume? No volume in a flat surface. Do you care about diameter? It's not in my formula. Any of these variables constant? Did I label a constant one? Let's see. A rock is dropped, pebbles dropped in the water. The radius of the outer ripple, it, ah, the radius, I didn't label it. Right here. Isn't that dr dt? Is one foot per second? Identify all the variables. Oh, I, ha I put dr dt, but I... I didn't realize it was constant until I thought about it right now. dr dt equals to one foot per second is constant. That's what the outer ripple is doing. Identify the rate, what I want to look for. I'm looking for dA dt. I need an equation. If only I had an equation that, rep that puts together A's and R's of a circle. And then, once we have our equation, I'm not plugging in my radius right now. I'm not plugging in my area right now. I don't plug anything in. I want to do the, I take my a as pi r squared, and I do the derivative with respect to time both sides. So what does that give me? Da dt is, pi is constant, guys. R is not. What's the derivative? dr dt? How about the pi? What's that? Well, you don't do the derivative of it. You pull it out, right? Okay, 2 pi r dr dt. And the last step is plug everything that I know. And what is dA dt at this moment of time? Or is that what I'm looking for? What did I write up there? I wrote that I was looking for it. So dA dt is 2 pi. What's the radius at this moment of time? He said 4. When I press my watch and stop the time, the radius is 4. Did I write it up there? Or did he say it? It's after you do the derivative, though. Right here? No, in the second like box. Oh, one. One foot per second. Oh, okay. No, at this moment of time, yeah. the radius is four. Because right. when the radius is four, is now I plug in. When R is four, I, I am going to plug it into the completed derivative. And dr dt, do I know what dr dt is? That was the constant. Always one. So I think the final answer is, at the moment of time that four minutes went by, is it minutes, I think? Yeah, four feet per, no, second. In four seconds, the area was changing at eight pi, what were the units? 
feet, feet per second. Are you sure it's feet? It's area. Feet square per second. Now, just for kicks, I want to explain to you that what if I was checking it in uh, when the radius is 2? When the radius is 2. This is extra work. I'm going to show you. When R is 2. That means it hasn't been growing as big. It hasn't been growing as long. And so I use the same equation. I just want to show you dA dt now will be equal to 2 pi times 2 times 1. Now it's only 4 pi feet squared per second. Was the area increasing more in 2 seconds or was it increasing more at 4? It's increasing more at 4. What do you think happens in 10 seconds? In 10 seconds. DA DT will be 2 pi times 10 times 1. 20 pi feet squared per second. The longer the time goes out, that, that concentric circle is going out, and even though it doesn't go out that far, the area got huge. So the change of area gets larger and larger every second that it goes out. I'm just showing you how you, why it's going to be different than this answer. Problem and the next thing here, next one. Water is leaking out of a cylindrical tank at the rate of three cubic foot per second. What's three cubic foot per second? Give me a label. Water is leaking out. Is it volume is 3? dV dt is 3 cubic feet. I can't see it. it. Won't stay down. Stay down per second. Would it be positive volume or negative volume? Negative. Why? Leaking out. That's a cylindrical tank. Looks like this. Cylindrical tank. Water is leaking out. There's the water coming out. And there it is, DVDT. It's leaking three cubic feet per second. That's a lot of water. Okay? Big water, Bill. If the radius of the tank is four feet, okay? So radius of the tank is four feet and what is the rate of the depth of the water changing at any time during the leak leak what is he looking for what is the depth of the water changing or how is the depth of the water changing what does that represent give me a name for the depth of the water changing the height, the height is changing so how would I label it? The water was up to here. It's gone down, and now it's going down. So the, this is a height. Well, so was that a height. That was height one or height two, and here's height one. So what's changing? We're looking for dH dt. Okay. Now I'm going to try to put a curveball with you on this problem and see if you catch it. What variables are being used with this cylinder? <clears throat> to remind you about the formula, volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. h. Come on, h. That's to remind you, it's on the other page. So what, what variables am I using? Obviously volume. Obviously, radius, obviously, height, obviously, change of volume, obviously, change of height. Tell me about my change of radius. Because the next question says, 
Which of those are constant? Right. Tell me about. Tell me how you know. Oh, it's it's forced by the container's walls. That's right. Dr dt is constant. So you have two choices to make because I'm going to show it to you. I'll show you both of them. But anyway, what am I looking for? I'm looking for dh dt. Very complicated, but that's what I'm looking for. By the way, if we're talking about feet, height is in feet. Height is not feet squared. Height is not feet cubed. This is going to be in feet per second. Okay, that's what the unit's going to be. Okay, so when I write the equation, watch this. Volume is pi r squared h. And then the next step says to differentiate both sides. Well, let me show you something here. What would happen if I didn't treat radius as a constant? What formula would I have to have used to get my dv dt? I would have to have said pi is on the outside. Then I'd have the product rule, wouldn't I? And I'm going to write it out just for kicks. You don't have to copy this down. The first r squared times dh dt plus h times 2r dr dt. Okay, so let's pretend you didn't pay attention and you wrote that all out. And then you start plugging everything in. And then you get to, okay, I got R number. I got, I'm looking for DH, DT. Uh, I got an H number maybe. I got an R number maybe. And then I get to DR, DT. What would I plug in for that? What is DR, DT if it's constant? Zero. So everything connected to this side would go to zero. But you wasted a lot of time for work of working. Because look what you could do over here. If you have V equals to pi R squared H and R is not changing, and I do the derivative with now this is this is what you can copy down. The derivative with respect to time, derivative with respect to time, dv dt will be pi R squared pulls out. It's a constant. I'm only doing the derivative of h, dh dt. And if you look over here, look what's left over here. Pi r squared. Why don't I have an h in there? Oh, dh dt. Why don't I have pi r squared dh? This is the same thing. Pi r squared dh dt. This went away because dr dt was zero. This is so much cleaner if you pay attention to what variable is constant. Okay, now we gotta solve it for, do I know dv dt? I'm gonna re what was dv dt? Negative three. Negative three equals two, my pi. Do I know what r is at that moment of time? What is r? Always four, right? Squared. And do I know my dh dt? No. Is that what I'm looking for? Yeah. Oh, look how the plan it falls together. My dh dt will be the negative 3 divided by 16 pi. Let me ask a question to you. What if you wanted to give the decimal answer? Can I? Okay. You have a calculator? How do you come to calculus without a calculator? Wait a minute. How do you come to calculus and let the calculator sit there? Somebody key it in. Let's see how smart they are. First one that tells me correctly gets extra credit. 
Oh, he's, he's already talking back there. Who was it? Oh, oh, it was Aaron? Oh. No, you take the points. No, you take the points. So, so what do I write? Would I write equals or approximately? Oh, I didn't do my unit. Oh, my gosh. Feet per second. Okay. Or is approximately what? I thought you had it in your calculator. Well, I thought so, too. I have it. Too. Okay, Valentina. It's, is it negative zero? Five, zero, zero. <laughs> what? No, zero, five. Zero, five? Yes, Nine, six, eight, 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 seven, five. Why are you giving so many decimals? That's exact, sir. Huh? I put it exact. No, you will never be exact. Because it goes on forever. Your calculator doesn't store it all. How far do we go, class? Three yes, three decimals, always. Okay, so it's zero, six, zero feet per second if you choose to go there. I'm so lazy that I just stay here. All right. How much time we got? Oh, my goodness. You guys are making... All right, here's the deal. I don't know if I want to go to another price problem, and then, but at the beginning, great time. Three, well, because I got to save something for the next lecture. And so that gives me one. I'm going to go, I can finish this one. Let's do one more with all the baby steps there, okay? A cone... Let me draw it. I love ice cream cones. A cone with a diameter of 10 inches. Let me label what they said. 10 inches. And a height of 15 inches. That's this height of 15 inches. Water is being poured into the cone so that the height of the water is changing at the rate of two inches per second. Somebody tell me how to label this. 1.2 inches. Say it again. DHDT -D is a perfectly good label. And obviously, um, I don't like this diameter being 10. I'd rather use the symbol R to be what? Five. Five. And the height of that is 15, fine. At the instant when the radius is of the surface is two inches. At the instant, that means right when this gets up here to two, I hit my watch and I stop the time. Stop the clock. Everything's frozen. All the water that's coming in it's frozen in the air, like ice. What is the rate of volume? At what rate is the volume of the water changing? Label that. What am I looking for? DV. DV. DT. So to remind you about a cone, the volume formula is one-third pi r squared h. What variables do I need? Volume. What else? Radius. radius. Is radius constant again? Yes. No. yes or no? Oh, no. Oh, no? No, not in a cone. Oh, the radius is changing. If the water was full, the whole top, it'd be, I think it was... Uh, the radius would be 5. The height? No, it's water going in. Isn't the height? The height of the cone. That's the height of the cone, but the water level has a height too. So before it gets to 2, it was 1. Before it got to 1, it was 0.3. So the height is moving. So I guess we got to put height is there. And with those, 
would be your DVs, DTs, would be your DR, DT, would be your D. Oh, wait, you're saying, uh, are you saying the rate is constant of the height? He said something in there. He did say he did say something right here. I, I see what you're saying. The DHDT is constant. It's always 1.2 feet per second. Is that what you meant? Yeah, I mean the height the height's not constant. The rate of change of the height is constant. The height is going up the same each time. That doesn't mean the same amount of water is being poured in. Sometimes it's more water, more water, more whatever. The speed of the water is different. <coughs> so the next question is, which of these are constant? Volume's not constant. There's more water being put in. More water comes in, more volume. That's not, that's not staying. Volume's not constant. Radius, as it goes up, the radius gets longer. That's not constant. As the water goes up, the water goes up. The height's not constant. Uh, I, I don't have any reason to believe that the change of water is constant, only because that's what we're looking for. Okay. DRDT, I'm not sure what that's doing, but I have a, but DHDT, he did say, was always 1.2 feet per second. Now the question is, is it positive or negative? Positive. It's always positive. It's why? It's going yeah. up. Oh. Yeah. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for mm -hmm. dv dt. And re reminder, if we were talking about inches, volume would be in inches Cube, cubic inches per second. So I, I, I like to write that down next to what I'm looking for so you don't lose your point, guys. Make, take a look at that each time. I need an equation. Well, I wrote it up there. I wrote it up there just to be showing off. But volume is one-third pi r squared h. Now, on f let's see, we said H is not constant, but dH dt is. So when I do implicit differentiation, it's going to look like this. dV dt is 1 third pi, that's pi over 3, is constant. Now I have to use product rule on r squared and h. The first, r squared, times the derivative of h, dh dt, plus h times 2r, dr dt. Now, I could go further, but Madeline told me that dh dt is constant. What does that mean for this part of the equation? Or I'll just plug everything in. Let me just plug it in in case we're not, we're not, no. E equals 2, pi over 3. Let's plug everything in. I need to know what R is at that moment of time. Oh, by the way, this is the hardest problem on the AP test I've ever seen about related rates. It was just like this. R? Did it say that? It said the sir, it said uh, at at the time the radius of the entire of the exposure is two. Oh, okay, you're right. Two. Two squared times dh dt. What is dh dt? One point two plus what is the h? It's okay to say we don't know. We're here. I know this is two.
No, R was two. You said R, right? R is two. I know this is two. I don't know this H. This is the hardest problem. Here's how we do it. What if the water was full? What's the R when it's full? Five. What's the height when it's full? Fifteen. What if I told you you had a proportion? You've got the total height over the height that I do not know equals to the, the total radius over the radius that I do know. This can be solved for H. H would be, I think H would be 6. Can someone please do it for me? 30 divided by 5, H. I think you cross multiply. 30 equals to 5H. H is 6. There it is. Okay. All right. I'll finish this problem up and I'll post it. Oh, wait. Before you go. Next problem. Bingo, bango. Here's a couple problems that don't have any helps at all. You're on your own. Okay. That's how you're going to see it on AP test. Naked. I call those naked related rates. Two. Two. Well, actually, there's a lot of problems on there. Oh, no, this is one big problem, A, B, and C. This is one big free response problem. Anyway, but I was Three, two, one. No, I wasn't going to do that. You have to do... Okay, do the first page of the homework. Page one. Got it? We didn't get to grade the other paper. Next time.